Welcome to the Matt Western 365 YouTube channel. Wouldn't it be great if I could preload SharePoint with a number of announcements that I want to be released throughout the year? Today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to investigate scheduling within SharePoint Online. For years, we've been using SharePoint Online and SharePoint Server as an intranet, and we've had the same requirement time and again. I want my news items to appear at a certain date. Up until now, it's always been something that we've had to do through workflows or event receivers, some sort of custom customization to really get to that type of, that type of functionality. But now it's available natively within SharePoint Online. And it's really, really simple to actually use. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dive straight into the demo and we're going to have a look at how we turn on scheduling and how it can be used within SharePoint Online. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to be using a communication site within SharePoint. And I'm going to focus on the creation of news because that's generally what we want to schedule. Yes, we might want to schedule policies and so on, but for this, I'm going to really focus on the news capability. So let's go and look at what the out of the box experience is because by default, scheduling isn't turned on. So if I go and add news and I'm going to go and create myself a new visual news item and I'm going to call this my non scheduled news item. And I'm just going to go ahead and post that news straight away. Okay, so now I've got my news item, which is being displayed on the home page straight away. Uh, there's no scheduling about that whatsoever. It will just happen immediately. But that's not what, what, what I want to do. I want to be able to specify a date when my news is actually going to appear. So I'm going to return back to my site pages library for a moment. Now what I'm going to point out is along the top I have Power Apps, I've got Automate, and I've also got Scheduling, which has now appeared uh, across my top bar. So when I press Scheduling, it basically has two options, on or off. So by default, as you can see, scheduling is switched off. So let's go and turn it on. And just worthwhile noticing the, the small um, warning that you get here. So if you have pages scheduled and you turn this off in the future, then all of your pages will become immediately visible. It will forget the scheduling uh, aspect that you've, you've put in place. So just keep that in mind if you do turn scheduling back off again. So. Now that I've created, uh, I've turned scheduling on, let's go and do exactly the same again. Let's go and add, let's go and add a new news post. And let's go for a basic text this time. Let's go and create that page. Uh, so this is my scheduled page. Okay, so this time, before I go and post the news, let's go and have a look at the page details again. Now last time, the blade that appeared on the right was quite empty. But this time I've actually got an additional heading here. So I've still got my thumbnail, still got my uh, I've still got my properties, but I've now got scheduling as well. And I don't have to use it. By turning it on at the library level, it basically now gives me the option to use this on a page level. So if I turn this on for this particular page, then it gives me the ability to select what, when I actually publish this. So let's go and select my publishing. I'm gonna say that I want that to publish at the on the 28th of October at 8 a.m. Okay, so now I've scheduled that to, uh, to start. If I go and schedule this this time, notice my, my button up here has changed from publish to schedule. Okay, my page is now scheduled. So let's have a look, what does that mean? So that means that on my home page, my, uh, my uh, news isn't visible until we get to eight o'clock on the date that I chose this to go live. So what I've just done is I've just added the version onto the view um, because what I wanna show is that um, normally when we're creating pages, we're creating major, uh, major versions only. But when we're using scheduling, we actually start using minor versions as well. So here I have version 0.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the scheduling on this page just to go and 
get this published a little bit sooner. So let's go for today and I'm gonna go for uh, 8 p.m. which is about a minute's time. Okay, so now that's scheduled. I'm gonna reschedule that. Okay, so while that's happening, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move across into Power Automate because I've used Power Automate to go and grab the properties for this news item just so that we can see what's actually set behind the scenes. So these, this is all the metadata that is associated with my page. So this is my scheduled page. There's the title. You can see that that was my display name and so on. Let's go and have a look at some of the key, uh, key concepts. So the first is this one. So it, normally when we publish news, it has a, this piece of metadata called promoted states and it gets set to two. It's held as one while it's in draft mode. So effectively until it gets published, or until the schedule goes ahead and runs it, it actually has a promoted state of one, which means it's, it's a news item, which is in draft. We'll rerun this again in a moment once we actually see our page uh, appear, and we'll see how that promoted state changes. But you can see I've also got an additional piece of metadata on here, which is the published start date. Uh, so that is the date that I, I, I originally set it to before I changed it. So we'll rerun this in a moment. Let's just put that back into edit mode. Let's go back across to my page and let's just give this a refresh. Okay, and there we go. There is, this is my schedule page. So that's the one that I scheduled. So I've now got two news items that have appeared at the time that I wanted it to appear. Let's go back to Power Automate again. Let's go and rerun this. So remember last time my promoted state was, um, was one. Let's go and rerun this. So now as I scroll down, interestingly, the modified by has changed to the system account because it was the system account, the, that, that timer job that's running behind the scenes that has gone and published my, um, that has gone and published my news item for me. So it's now been updated by the system account rather than being updated by me as a user. Something to bear in mind if you're using the modified by um, for filtering and so on. My promoted state is two. So now uh, I can see that this is in a promoted, it's now a fully fledged news item. We've also now got this first published date appear. So the first published date is the first time that this has actually been published as a news item. And if I just go back to my site pages, then you can see here that my schedule has now updated from being 0.1, like uh, which it was before, to 1.0 because it's now been scheduled as uh, and published as a major version. So that's one of the new things that's come out for SharePoint Online. It's one of those things that we have done manually for so long, and it's great to see it finally in the product without having to do any code, without having to write any uh, flows, without having to do anything. I just need to click some buttons. Very, very simple to go and set the date because I do it within the context of the page itself. Just remember that you need to turn on scheduling at the library level, first of all, and then you have the option of doing it at a page level. It's not enforced. You, but it's there for you to use if you need it to go through uh, to go and um, to go and publish at a certain point. The one thing that I point out, which uh, which is worthwhile remembering, is that this isn't permissioning. It's not changing the permissions. If I have a um, if I have the the permission set up on the library so that only uh, viewers can't see the draft versions, then I'm not going to see it. But otherwise, if a viewer can see the uh, the draft versions of a document then they'll be able to see it before it gets published and i'll talk about those options in a later video but for now i hope that's been good to see that coming through i hope you can find some use for it i know i certainly can in a lot of my projects for a lot of clients um, one that i'm very excited about i'm glad to see it there and i hope you are too if you've got any questions about sharepoint or any of the other technologies that we've looked at today please do feel free to reach out you can reach out to me at Twitter at MattWeston365. You can find me on LinkedIn, um, again, at MattWeston365. Or please feel free to like, subscribe, and reply to or post a comment on any of the videos that I've got on my channel. And I'll be happy to give you a hand in any way that I can. But for now, I hope you'll stay safe. Take care, and we'll speak again soon.